Hi there, this is Mark Killian. Welcome to Mark Killian's channel where we're always learning. And this week we are learning about an instrument you may never have seen in your life before. This instrument hails from Kenya. It is called the Nayatiti or Nayatiti, however you pronounce that correctly. Anyone from South Africa will understand why I get such pleasure out of calling it a Nayatiti. But onwards, let's give you a little taste of what this beast sounds like. Okay, so the Nightiti has a frame, and this particular one has six strings. Um, generally, they have between six and eight, between five and eight, um, but most of the time, eight. Um, I got this one in Morocco, but it's not really a traditional Kenyan uh, Nightiti. It, it doesn't have the uh, the eight strings, um, which a traditional, more traditional Nightiti has, and it doesn't have the same tuning situation these are wooden pegs driven into holes so it's a little funkier uh, traditionally they are um, leather spirals that are tightened around here um, and turned to tune and so the more you turn it the more it tightens and it's actually a very good tuning system um, the other instruments like the gimbri and 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 various other instruments use that same system um, very effectively this is usually eucalyptus tree i'm not sure if this is eucalyptus or not but generally that's what it's made from but the rest of it's kind of similar, you know, it's a, basically a bowl, a wooden bowl um, with a cow hide or cow skin um, stretched around it and dried. And then this is the resonator and there's a little hole in here for, for all of this to amplify and resonate the sound of the strings. Um, you've got a bridge that is movable. Um, traditionally, it's made out of papyrus and fashioned a little better than this one this is basically just a ill-fashioned twig really but um but it works and um the thing itself sounds fine it's not a great quality nitt by any means um but i do love this instrument so much and the tuning of course can be whatever you want it to be i've generally in film music tuned this thing in um in dorian mode or you know whatever it is the piece i'm working on i'll just tune each string to work with whatever piece i'm working on but traditionally, it's tuned, um, oddly enough, to an E mixolydian mode, um, but very often a, a, a pentatonic version of that. Um, so the notes you will find um, are going to be E, G sharp, A, B, and then D, D natural, because it's mixolydian, and then E. So just in terms of uh, steps of scale, you've got the tonic, and you've got the upper octave tonic both E's, you've got the third major, G sharp, you've got the fourth, A, you've got the fifth, B, and then you have the seventh, the flattened seventh, the B, I mean sorry, the D, that should be a D sharp if you were in a um, Ionian or major scale, but it's not, it's Mixolydian, therefore you have your D, um, and so this is what it sounds like. So it's beautiful, it's, um, you know, obviously you can play this in any mode. Some people will tune, will have this similar tuning up, up to the F. Um, but generally, Nayatiti music is pretty much all in the scale, in this key. 
and then you have your strings and in this case they are um, just gut I mean these are just classical guitar strings um, but you can use fishing line or whatever um, and traditionally these would have been made from animal tendons um, so it probably affected the sound somewhat you can tune this thing to anything you like and, and um, I'm going to show you a few examples where I've tuned it to, to different things than what I have it tuned to now so let's gonna have a quick look at a recording I did of um, the Nighty um, using it in a track I did for a documentary I did about tigers um, this documentary came out but now it's being refashioned for IMAX so look out for it in the future um, a really cool documentary and here is a piece I did on the Naya Titi for Tigers. This instrument hails from Western Kenya, um, specifically from the Luo tribe of Western Kenya. It is to be found all the way south into the northern part of Tanzania or Tanzania in the, the Lakes District there. Now you're not going to believe the historical pedigree that this instrument has. It's actually quite incredible. So let me start out by showing you a picture. This is a picture of a piece of ivory, um, part of a collection called the Megiddo Ivories. That were found in a city called Megiddo, you might better know it as Armageddon, in northern Israel. And these ivories date back to around 1200 before Christ. So that's about 3200 years old. Um, and you can very clearly see in that picture an instrument, I'll show it again, that looks a lot like this. Now what is that instrument? Well, this is a picture or a carving on a piece of ivory of a Canaanite setting. This is a Canaanite harp, but very, very close to this, um, maybe 100 or 200 years after this ivory um, was carved, um, we believe that King David lived. That's around 1,000 years before Christ. Um, and the King David harp, as it's known, um, became a very popular instrument it's also known as the Kenor harp or the Neville harp. Um, there are slight differences there, but they're all essentially the same instrument. And this instrument can actually be traced to even before this, to the Egyptians. Um, here's a picture of that. Um, so, you know, we're talking many thousands of years that, that the pedigree of this instrument can be traced. And it really is kind of the same instrument. Now I'm going to do another episode on, on um, the King David harp because I have a, 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 a few of them um, and, I, and, and I'd like to demonstrate those for you. But they are essentially the same instrument. Of course those are metal strings and they're either 10 or usually 12 strings. But beyond that um, it's, it's actually quite incredible to me how, how similar this instrument is to something that existed so many thousands of years ago. And this all developed from the harp, um, which was too big to move around. So people started making them smaller with this bar across the top so that they became portable. Um, and, and actually they all originally come from the mouth bow uh, of the San, of the Bushman in, in Africa. It is believed that is where all of the harps and the um, um, instruments that basically came out of the bowed idea of the original mouth bows that, that the sand people made, um, which were fashioned from a bow and arrow originally. Now, Nayatiti or Nayatiti means, more accurately pronounced, um, daughter of the clan. It's feminine. Um, it has a very spiritual place in, in uh, traditional peoples and um, is traditionally only played by men. Um, interestingly enough, there is a 
Japanese uh, lady who moved to Kenya and learned to play, I forget her name now, I'll put it up here, and learned to play this thing and sing, and she's amazing. So also worth checking her out. But the guy that you really want to check out on, the, on, on this instrument, on the 90T, is Ayubagada. He is from Kenya, and that is where I first fell in love with this instrument, listening to track of his. Um, gee, I think it was on the Constant Gardener. It was on that soundtrack, if I remember correctly. Um, just a great track, and I was like, what the hell is that? Beautiful instrument. Um, unfortunately, he passed away early 2019, um, but he was certainly, I think, the master of this instrument. Now, I want to play another track for you where I tuned this thing differently, and it sounds different, um, but uh, I have a disclaimer. Um, up until now in these videos, I've managed to shield and protect you from having to hear me sing. Um, but in this particular video, I'm singing um, and uh, with a tune differently and I'm sort of just singing gobbledygook. I'm just singing in a style of a Zulu song. Um, so just busking really. This is a different sound for the Nayatiti. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. I love this instrument and I had a lot of fun making this episode. So I hope you got something out of it. Please go check out Ayuba Gada and uh, listen to his music. He's amazing. You will fall in love. Um, please, please, please like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button right there. And also leave comments and questions. I love to interact with people. Um, and if there's anything I said wrong or, or something you know a little more about than I do, please, please, please put it in there. Um, that's what this is all about. We're always learning. So I'll catch you next week. Stay safe. My, my grandmother even wasn't alive around then. Okay, you've already used that. Now, why don't we go and check? Okay. Um, and this is your resonator. This is what, whoopsie. That's a really, that's awesome. Let's try that again. Now, go check out by your, uh, to, 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 uh, um, and, and, um, and, and, and what? What the fuck? Um, where you're going to find, and this is traditionally, this is the how they are. Let's, 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 let's do that again. Thing, okay, let's do wait, wait, the... Oh, no, fucking try that all again. This instrument is incredibly... Means... What? Hi there! Um, I think I should do all that again. Let's do some play.
Alright, fucking done.